سلام عليكم. After the Friday prayer ended in the mosque, immediately after the Imam said السلام عليكم ورحمة الله, one old man started repeating his shahada. أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأن محمد رسول الله. Again and again and again in front of everybody. People were looking at him so confused. What's going on? What's happening? He repeated it 15 times, then leaned his head on the wall and died. Died immediately after Friday prayers inside the masjid, after repeating his shahada 15 times. All the hundreds of people in that mosque prayed for his forgiveness, but only one of them was curious. Why did he deserve this amazing ending? He went to his family and neighbors and started asking them about his secret. Because the Prophet peace and blessing be upon him said, يُبْعَثُ كُلَّ عَبْدٍ عَلَى مَا مَاتَ عَلَيْهِ Everyone will be resurrected on what he was doing at his last moment. He said, I want to know what did he do in his life to deserve this amazing last moment. I want a good ending like him for myself. His family told him, in his whole life, we never heard him say anything bad about anyone. Never seen him gossip or backbite. His neighbors said, one day there was a huge fight in the neighborhood. Everyone was swearing at each other and calling each other names, except this man. We never heard from him any foul language. In the same city, People reported a car accident. A car was flipped upside down, and people were trying to get the driver out, but he was severely injured. He kept repeating one word until he died. He was saying, I don't want to meet him. I don't want to meet him. Turns out, he was a young teenager who spent most of his life drinking and clubbing. This specific day, he left his friends to buy some more drinks and come back to them. He thought he could drive in his condition, but unfortunately, he couldn't. And these were his last words. I don't want to meet him. The one who reported this story is one of his friends, who were waiting for him to bring him some more drinks. Alhamdulillah, he repented now, and he is a very good practicing Muslim. Hearing this kind of stories make you wonder, does the moment of death have a connection to your life decisions? Does it represent what will happen to you in the hereafter? And if so, how to make sure you have a good ending? This is what we're going to talk about in this video. So bring your coffee and let's start. Now let's take a look at some real life examples of amazing endings. Amazing. Abu Bakr Sadiq, may Allah be pleased with him, died while reciting the Quran. He was reading verse 19 from chapter Qaf. Then came the days of death with the truth. Umar ibn al-Khattab was always making dua to die as shaheed in the city of the Prophet. People were telling him that is impossible. If you want to die as shaheed, you have to go to battles outside of Medina. Medina is a peaceful place. But subhanallah, he was stabbed while prostrating in prayer, where? Inside the mosque of the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him. That is even better than what he asked for. While bleeding out, he asked, who killed me? Who killed me? They said, a man from al Majus. He said, thanks and praise to God that my killer was not a Muslim. Put my cheek on dust where it belongs, so may the God of Omar have mercy on Omar. And then he died. Uthman ibn Affan, may Allah be pleased with him, saw a vision in his dream. He saw that the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, is telling him, After عندنا الليلة, I'm inviting you to break your fast with a meal with me tomorrow. Come. He woke up next day fasting. And he got killed while fasting and reading the Qur'an with his own blood over the Qur'an he was reading. SubhanAllah. Ali ibn Abi Talib, may Allah be pleased with him. On his last day, he knew that he was about to be killed. He decided not to eat much. People asked him, why don't you eat? 
He said, I love to meet Allah with light stomach so I can enjoy the meeting. And then he was killed on his way to lead the prayer in the mosque as Imam. What an amazing ending. Allah loved our mother Khadija. On her deathbed, Allah sent Jibreel to the Prophet and told him, اقرأ عليها السلام من ربها ومني وبشرها ببيت في الجنة من قصب Tell Khadija that Allah himself says salam to her. And I say salam to her too. And tell her that there is a house in paradise waiting for her. And tell her that in this house in paradise there will be no more hardship. Some might ask, why brother? She is literally dying right now. Instead of sending Jibreel to give her the good news, she will find out anyway after like one minute. Actually, that is what is amazing about this story. Not only she will have zero fear of the moment of death, but also Allah declared his love to her, to all humanity, including me and you watching this video. Omar ibn Abdul Aziz, may Allah be pleased with him. You will not believe this. On his last day, his wife went in the room. She said, I smelled from his deathbed an amazing fragrance that I have never smelled before in my life. I found him so happy and smiling. Then he read one verse of the Quran. تِلْكَ الدَّارُ الْآخِرَةِ نَجْعَلْهَا لِلَّذِينَ لَا يُرِيدُونَ عُلُوًّا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَلَا فَسَادًا وَالْعَاقِبَةُ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ This is the home of the hereafter. We assign it to those who want no exaltation in the land or corruption. And the future outcome is for those who are mindful of Allah. He recited this verse and immediately died after. Muhammad al-Ghazali, the famous Egyptian scholar, he spent his whole life teaching and defending Islam. One day he got a request to defend Islam in a conference in Saudi Arabia. He traveled there. And in the middle of the conference, while he was defending Islam, he got a heart attack and he died. He died while defending Islam. His body was not sent back to Egypt to be buried. He was so lucky. To be buried in Al Baqi'ah Cemetery, exactly between the body of Imam Malik and the body of Ibrahim, the son of the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him. The man burying him in an interview, he said, "I was wondering who is this great man whom Allah destined this burial place for." Do you remember the story that went viral of the man who died on Mount Arafat while doing his pilgrimage, his Hajj? That was exactly what happened at his last minute. He said to his wife, I have one page left to finish reading the Quran. Let me read it. And he read it. Then he raised his hand to the sky and said, Allah, I want to go to paradise. I can't wait. And he died. Sheikh Kishk saw a vision in his dream that he died and the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, was cleansing his body with his own hands. The next day, he died while prostrating in prayer. Remember the passenger ship Salem Express, the ship that sank in the Red Sea? Survivors reported the death story of an amazing woman. While the ship was sinking, her husband was shouting at her, come, come quickly, let's find a lifeboat. She told him, wait until I wear my hijab first. He told her, there is no time for hijab, come quickly. She said, I will not meet him on a sin. I will wear my hijab first. After a while, she held her husband from his clothes and asked him, are you pleased with me? Are you pleased with me? I want to hear it from you. He said, yes, I am pleased with you. She smiled and she said her shahada several times and drowned. Amir ibn Abdullah ibn Zubair, on his deathbed, he heard the call for prayer from the mosque next to him. He said to his family, please take me to the mosque. They told him, no way, you're so sick, you can't go to the mosque in this condition. He said, do you want me to hear the call for prayers and not go? Carry me there. They carried him to the prayer and he died during prostration in the middle of the prayer. Sheikh ibn Taymiyyah died while repeating one verse in the Quran. إِنَّ الْمُتَّقِينَ فِي جَنَّاتٍ وَنَهَرٍ 
في مقعد صدق عند مليك مقتدر. Indeed, the righteous will be in gardens and rivers at the seat of honor in the presence of the most powerful king. Sheikh Shaharawi, his last day was unbelievable. In the morning, he told his son, I am meeting my Lord today. Help me clean myself, cut my nails, buy me new clothes. Then he asked his son to leave him alone for a while. Later, his son entered the room on him. He found his father looking up and saying, Prophet Muhammad, Prophet Ibrahim, all of that for me? I don't deserve all this. Then he said his shahada and died. His funeral was attended by an imaginable number of people. Almost all men in his city and the surrounding cities attended. It was one of the biggest funerals in modern history. All of these people prayed for his forgiveness and for his blessing. By the way, these pictures that you are seeing in front of you right now, these amazing smiles on those faces, these are not breathing people. This phenomena of smiling bodies of dead martyrs confused everyone except those who reflect on the Quran. الذين قالوا لإخوانهم وقعدوا لو أطاعونا ما قتلوا قل فدرؤوا عن أنفسكم الموت إن كنتم صادقين ولا تحسبن الذين قتلوا في سبيل الله أمواتا أمواتا بل أحياء عند ربهم يرزقون فرحين بما آتاهم الله من فضله ويستبشرون بالذين لم يلحقوا بهم من خلفهم ألا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون يستبشرون بنعمة من الله وفضل وأن الله لا يضيع أجر المؤمنين الذين استجابوا لله والرسول من بعد ما أصابهم القرح للذين أحسنوا منهم واتقوا أجر عظيم May Allah grant me and you the best ending. Now let's take a look at some real life example of bad endings. During the Battle of Khandaq, the disciples saw a very courageous man fighting with power and devotion for the sake of Allah until the enemies overpowered him and stabbed him. He was dying in the nursing tent and the disciples were whispering, Lucky him, he will be in Jannah very soon. This is when the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, No, he will not be in Jannah, he will be in hellfire. The disciples were shocked. How come a man who fights and dies for the sake of Allah be in hell? So they went to the nursing tent to check on him. He was in severe pain and he couldn't endure the pain. So he took his own sword and stabbed himself with it. When the disciples saw this, they said, Allahu Akbar, exactly what the Prophet said. Do you know how Abu Lahab died? The man whose ego and pride and arrogance consumed his life. He was hit by a stick accidentally by a little girl. A little girl. This hit made a small wound. Because of this small wound, he caught a skin disease that made parts of his skin start to fall off. People were so afraid to be next to him, even his own family left him. He spent the last part of his life alone in his house. And he died alone. Even after his death, people were afraid to bury him, so they destroyed his own home over his dead body instead of burying him. Do you know how Ubay ibn Khalaf died? The man who promised to kill the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him. And the Prophet responded to him and said, Bal ana aqtuluk, inshallah. But the opposite will happen. I will be the one who will kill you. In the battle of Uhud, 
the disciples told the prophet, There is a man running towards you to kill you. Take care. He said, Who? They said, It is Ubay ibn Khalaf. The prophet pushed the disciples away from him, took a spear and threw it at him. But Ubay was wearing a lot of armors and shield everywhere. So the spear didn't kill him. It just made a tiny wound in his neck. Small scratch. Ubay then screamed, Muhammad killed me, Muhammad killed me. People around him told him, no he didn't, it's just a tiny scratch, it's nothing. But he kept screaming, Muhammad killed me, Muhammad killed me. He promised he would kill me and he did. And he kept running and screaming like a crazy person until he fell from the top of a mountain. Subhanallah. Do you know the famous actor Rojdi Abaza? who spent his whole life making romantic movies and promoting adultery between the Muslims. On his deathbed, the nurse told him, you should say your shahada, you're about to die. Instead, he said to her, give me a kiss, and then he died. This was his last deed. One day, a man reported that he was flying first class on a plane. Next to him was an old man with a suitcase. He looked very sick as if he was taking his last breath. So he told the man, say your shahada. Instead, the man responded, my bag, my bag. It has all of my life savings, give me my bag. He told him again, say your shahada, your bag will not help you. Then the man hugged his suitcase very hard and died. That is in addition to all the people who died committing adultery, who died drunk, who died because of substance overdose. People who were found dead alone in their private room with their pants down in front of a laptop. Three brothers from the people of the book wanted to travel to participate in war. But they were worried about their sister. Who will take care of her until we come back? They said there is no one better than a man called Barsisa, who is known to be a pious man. He worships God a lot, day and night, and he is a trustworthy person. So they went to him and asked him, Would you take care of our sisters until we come back? He immediately refused. He said, Of course not. It's haram to be alone with your sister. This is an idea of shaitan. I can't help you. Sorry. Then shaitan came to Barsisa, in a human form. He looked like a normal man and told Barsisa, why did you tell them no? They want your help to go to war. They are going to war for the sake of Allah, that is jihad. You are preventing good from happening. And if you're not going to look after their sister, they might just put their trust in someone else who is not trustworthy. Better you than someone who has evil in his heart, right? You are the most noble, Barsisa. You are the most pious. You are the one who should do it. Go, look after her for the sake of Allah. Barsisa called the brothers back and said, I agree. I will look after your sister, but she can't stay with me. I have a small house at the back of my temple. She will stay there. I will make sure to pass by her every day and bring her food and water and her needs. But we can't be together in the same place. The brothers agreed and they went to war. Barsisa kept his promises. Every day he would cook food for her and leave it outside of her door, knock on the door and walk away. But after some time, Shaitan came back to Barsisa. He told him, why are you being rude? You should treat people in a nice way. That's not a way to treat a woman. Leaving food outside of her house and walking away, she's not an animal. That's not proper behavior. Put the food inside at least, be a gentleman. Barsisa said, you know what, you're right. He agreed and did that every day for a while. Then Chaitan came back to him, said, Barsisa, it's been so long since the brothers went away. The woman has no one to talk to. She's alone all the time. She has no family, she has no friends, nothing. People have needs. Food and water are not enough. Most likely she is depressed and lonely. Talk to her a little. Talk to her for God's sake. 
talk to her even from outside of the house. And Barsisa agreed. And he started chatting with her a little. But he was standing outside of the door, never entered the house. After some time, Shaitan came back to Barsisa and told him, Why are you embarrassing yourself? You're a pious man, you will never do anything wrong. You can't chat with her every day standing up outside of the house like that. Think of her, her legs must be hurting her. Go inside, sit down like normal people and chat. It's just a chat, nothing wrong will happen. I think you started to predict what will happen. I will fast forward a little bit to the point when Parsisa committed adultery with her. You can imagine how Chaitan slowly and gradually, step by step, convinced both of them to fall into Zina. She became pregnant and gave birth to a baby boy. After a while, Shaitan came back to Barsisa and said, How will you explain the boy? The punishment for adultery is death in Taurah. You have to get rid of the evidence quickly or they will kill you. Barsisa killed the boy. His mother kept weeping and crying and screaming about her baby. Shaitan told Barsisa, this woman will not keep quiet about that. She will tell them what happened. You have to get rid of her too, or they will kill you. So Barsisa killed her too. And buried both of them in the desert. The brothers came back from war. They went to Barsisa and said, Where is our sister? He said, I am sorry for your loss. She became very ill. I tried to take care of her, but I couldn't. I brought her medicine, it didn't work. And she died. I buried her. The brothers said to themselves, Barsisa is a trustworthy, righteous person. Everyone knows him to say only the truth. We believe him. May Allah grant us patience. And they went away. The next morning, they woke up. One of the brothers said, I had a weird dream last night. And the other brother said, We too had a weird dream. Tell us your dream first and then we will tell you ours. He said, Okay. I saw that Barsisa had a baby with our sister and killed her. And I saw that he didn't bury her where he showed us. He buried her somewhere else in the desert. They were shocked. They said, We had the exact same dream last night. There is something weird about this dream. Let's go to this place that we saw in our dream and dig the grave and see if we can find the body of our sister and the baby. So they went there, they dug out the bodies, turns out the dream was correct. Everyone in town knows the story because they went to the ruler to ask him for justice and they were going to execute Barsisa. Then Shaitan came back to Barsisa one final time and said, Barsisa, do you know who am I? I am the Shaitan, and I am the one who got you in this mess, and I am the only one who can get you out of it, but on one condition. Barsisa said, anything, just get me out of this please. Then Shaitan said, if you prostrate to me, I will get you out of this. And Barsisa prostrated to the Shaitan, hoping to get out of the situation and maybe repent later. Shaitan lied to him. He didn't have any authority to get him out of trouble. He just wanted him to commit shirk as the last deed before his death. Shaitan said, thank you. Thank you for prostrating to me. And then they crucified him. كَمَثَلِ الشَّيْطَانِ إِذْ قَالَ لِلْإِنسَانِ كُفُرْ فَلَمَّا كَفَرَ قَالَ إِنِّي بَرِيءٌ مِّنْكَ إِنِّي أَخَافُ اللَّهَ رَبَّ الْعَالَمِينَ Like Satan, when he lures someone to disbelief, then after he have done so, he will say, I have absolutely nothing to do with you. I truly fear Allah, the Lord of the worlds. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا تُخُرُوا فِي السِّلْمِ كَافَةً وَلَا تَتَّبِعُوا خُطُوَاتِ الشَّيْطَانِ إِنَّهُ لَكُمْ عَدُوٌّ مُّبِينٌ Or you who attend faith, 
enter into Islam completely and do not follow the footsteps of Satan. Indeed, he is your clear enemy. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, Do not be proud of your deeds, because some people spend their lives doing the work of people of paradise. Then they turn to evil, and they die on evil. Others live their lives doing evil, then they turn to good and repent, and they die on good. When Allah wants good for his slave, he provides him with a righteous deed before death. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, also said, do not predict someone's hereafter until you see what deed his life will end with. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, also used to say, Ya muqallib al-qulubi, thabbit qalbi ala deenik. Allah, you are the one controlling the hearts. Keep the faith in my heart until the end. Abu Bakr, may Allah be pleased with him, used to say, Allahumma ja'al khayra umri akhiru, wa khayra amali khawatimi. God makes the last part of my life the best of it, and my last deed the best deed. Omar ibn al-Khattab used to say, Allahumma inni as'aluka shahadatan fi sabilik, wa wafatan bi baladi rasulik. God grant me death as shaheed for your sake, and grant me death in the city of your prophet. He repeatedly asked for it until he got it. Al-Hasan, may Allah be pleased with him, used to say, Allahumma ja'al khayra a'amalina khawatimaha. God make our last deed the best deed. These are just some reports that help us understand the significance of our last deed. And the most significant one is this hadith. Man mata ala shay'in ba'athahu Allahu alayhi. Everyone will be raised in the condition in which he died. I hope you understand now how important is your last deed in this life. How is my last deed determined? Or how to make sure that my last deed will be a good deed? The answer is very simple. It is a representation of what you cared about most in your life. That is whether what you cared most was public or private. Some people spend their lives publicly opposing the rules of Allah, challenging Him. And some people appear to be righteous in front of others, but in their hearts, they are sinners. The last deed will be representation to what is in their hearts, not what is apparent. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, I know people from my ummah who will come on the day of judgment with good deeds as big as the mountains of Tuhama. But Allah will make all of them nothing. The disciples said, O Prophet of Allah, who are these people? We are afraid to be one of them. He said, They are your brothers from our Ummah. They pray from the night the same way you pray. But the difference is, whenever they are alone and no one can see them, they live in sin. Someone might ask, Isn't it better to hide your sins so you won't encourage other people to copy your slips? Yes, of course, yes. The hadith is not talking about people who hide their sins. The hadith is talking about people who only do good in front of people. But the moment they are alone, they turn 180 degrees. To avoid being one of them, you should also hide some of your good deeds too, the same way you hide your slips. Have a repeating good deed or a charity or something that no one knows about. Make it between you and Allah. When Umar ibn al-Khattab was the king of the Muslims, a man saw him sneaking in the middle of the night into a house of an old woman, stayed there a little bit and then went out. The next day the man went to the old woman to ask her, what was this man doing in the middle of the night at your house? She said, I am an old lady, I am poor, I am blind and I am disabled. I can't walk and I don't see. There is no way for me to take care of myself. This man you're asking about, I don't know his name, but he comes to me every night to clean my house and bring me all what I need. And he has been doing that for a long time. That was the king of the Muslim Ummah. Another example, Zayn al-Abidin al-Ali bin al Hussein. When he died, they found on his shoulder marks for lifting heavy bags. They didn't understand why did he have this mark. But after that, 
All the poor in the city said, There was a mysterious man who was leaving food every night at our doorsteps. That stopped the moment Zain al Abidin died. Have a secret good deed just between you and Allah and keep repeating the dua in Quran chapter 3, verse 8. ربنا ولا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب Our Lord, do not let our hearts deviate after you have guided us. Grant us your mercy. You are indeed the giver of all bounties. The Prophet peace and blessing be upon him said, Deliver my message even if all you can deliver is one verse. Don't let this video stop with you. Share it with your friends and also help it spread by engaging with it, with likes and comments. And if you want to watch a complete breakdown on Sharia law, check out this playlist up there. And if you want to watch more Q&A videos like this one, check out this playlist down there. Thanks and salam alaikum.